my show, we keep everything about the issues. This is about the issues. This is not about drama. This is about the issue. We can't be silent. Because as a citizen journalist, what I do, I got my platform going state by state, converting my community to the left. With my platform, I focus on three things. State violence, the class war, and foreign policy. We are going to cover all three in this. Remember, before I get into this, this is not about drama. This is about issues. Because we got to have a conversation about Bosch. Because he, I see this video here. This is not about drama. This is about the issues. Because I cover foreign policy. I cover the class war. And there's a giant class divide on the left. And we are smeared as divisive when we call people out for not advocating for our community, for using the N-word and uh, normalizing that, for example. And now we have left-wing imperialists. Who do you think is responsible for that? These people got way more platform than me. They get maybe a thousand times more views than I do, maybe. So when I diss the Western left, what I'm talking about are the people who actually have the power and authority to guide the left-wing direction. The Bernie Sanders campaign didn't listen to Nina Turner and Brianna Joy Gray. They was advocating for Bernie Sanders to go harder in the paint. You had the more privileged bourgeoisie managerial class that was advocating for, oh, we got to pull out. Pramila Jayapal, they still like these people. They went, oh, you got to pull out. You got to make sure you don't hurt them. You, can't, you don't, we can't hurt Joe Biden. These are the people who had direction on the left. The people who, who got the biggest platforms, all white YouTubers, they, they got the left and they are led us off a cliff and the progressives have sold us out to the police state. Now, check this out. This is the video that's going around. I'm going to share a screen for you, Finney. One second. Once again, this is not about drama. This is about the issues. Now, you guys wonder why there's so many people that are weak on the issue of imperialism on the West. This is why. You guys wondering why I've been saying the Western left is a joke. This is why. Now, let's play this. It's going to be tough, but this is about the issues. So let's check this. Let's check this mess out. If we pulled out, if we allowed these countries to destabilize, you know what would happen within 10 years? Guaranteed. You know what would happen within 10 years? I bet you more than anything. America pulls out with no exit strategy, no long-term plan for supporting these countries. These countries fail and they turn into, I mean, we're talking Cambodia level. We're talking fields of corpses. China will come in with boots on the ground and fix their problems and they'll be Chinese vassal states for the next century. If we pulled out, if we allowed these countries to destabilize, you know what would happen within 10 years? Guaranteed, you know what would happen within 10 years? I bet you more than anything. America... So, this is not about drama. This is about the issues. Now, we have an imperialist faction of the left now. He who says the United States needs to stay in these countries or else you have China or someone else that would, would interfere. This is the argument straight out of neocons. My argument is I would love a great result, but who gives a shit? It's their decision, not yours. What Vosh is advocating there, he said the United States must force their hand. He must force their hand into the Western imperialist state. If you don't, we got we to gotta put sanctions on you. you got, we got to uh, invade in your country. We got to get involved in your elections. That's the neocon argument that he's using. So if China comes in and help a country, I'm not advocating for that, but that would be their decision. And people are wondering why there's a lot of imperialist leftists going on right now. Once again, this is not about drama. This is about the issue. Who the fuck are you to dictate who a country accept help from? You, you, you the more high ground police? Because the implication there is that the United States has a more high ground over China or in other countries, right? How does that make sense? I'm gonna pass, I want to get your thoughts here very soon, if any. But the U.S. funds multiple genocides. Biden blocked a U.N. ceasefire during the Israel offensive on Palestine so Israel can finish their operations. They were bulldozing homes and committing a genocide. And now they have a prime minister, Natalie Bennett, 
who is to the right of Benjamin Netanyahu, who openly called for the genocide of the Palestinian people in the next annexation of the West Bank. The United States just gave them a weapon deal. And you believe that other countries have the more high ground in, over us? We find in multiple genocides in Yemen. Vosh was just to stay in Libya. You know what the response? What happened when Barack Obama and the United States went in Libya? Shit lib. People ask me, I talk about this with Misty. They said, what is my definition of a leftist? And I am very lenient with this definition. My definition is you need two things. You need to be anti-imperialist and anti-capitalist. He failed, didn't he? Because he advocated for U.S. imperialism because he believed in the Western chauvinism that we inherently have the right answers. Well, I'm going to go off. You're, 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 go ahead, Finney. What, you got anything you want to add to that? Because I got a lot. Like this is, that is so, this is so ridiculous. We have a Western left that is leading a ton of people. Like, Vaughn's got a, a platform that's 100,000 times bigger than mine. He probably will get more views in five minutes of his live stream than we probably will a whole month, to be real. And this is what he's teaching these people. He's teaching these young white people that it's okay to say the N-word. That Now people are like, why are all these people saying the N-word? Because they got giant platforms. Kyle Galinsky got a giant platform. The Humanist Report, Rational National, they blocked me and unfollowed me because I called out a fucking racist, Nazi, who was racist during the Trump years? They they say, oh, we gotta we gotta we gotta fight against MAGA, we gotta vote against Trump, we gotta support Jim Crow Joe, because the MAGA and the right wing is racist. Meanwhile, we got white allies that are saying the N word in Africa that need to be uh, they say Africa need to be gentrified in 2017 while Trump was in charge. And you guys want black leftists to ignore this? Are you serious? You want us to stay silent? On this, on this blatant anti-blackness, on the, on the sound of, and we, we, uh, we, regarding Voss, there, him and his whole white crowd was very happy when Voss told me that black people need to vote for their oppressors. Now what's happening? You got the state that's literally targeting socialists, increasing the state that will go after the black community. That's who he advocated for. What's your thoughts, Finney? I would just like to say, number one, like, again... I am not trading my humanity and my existence to work with any one of you motherfucking white leftists. I don't give a fuck how big your platform is. I don't give a fuck what kind of political power you may have or what access you have. Fuck you and your access. The only power that I want to access is the, is the fucking power of the fucking people. I don't give a fuck about any of those fucking politicians. That's number one. Number two, American America is not fucking exceptional, like period. America is not exceptional. America is not right. America is not moral. America is a white supremacist, imperial, imperialist ass, genocidal ass country, period. Like we are no longer gonna sit up here and pretend like we are doing anything toward like close to protection or stabilization in these fuck in in the fucking middle east because we are absolutely not we are fun like 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 nick said we are funding fucking genocide we are giving money to saudi arabia who by the way commit like they're apparently the ones that are behind 9-11 right they were they were the ones behind 9-11 but we continuously give them money and, and weapons and we continuously go and fund we attend, continuously go to their country and legitimize their fucking government that literally oppresses women but we are the ones that have the moral high ground get the fuck out of here all the money that we spend bombing the middle east we should spend that rebuilding their fucking infrastructure we should spend that you know supporting their governments and not interfering with that shit not no military shit repair them Run them their coin all that money that you invested into bombing them and drone striking and all that bullshit all that extra coin y'all spent, make sure that y'all cut that same check to help them rebuild all the buildings that y'all fucking tore down. Make sure y'all cut them that same check to make sure they can fucking have clean drinking water. Cut them that same check, y'all. Like, so anybody that fucking advocates for imperialism, you are, like, there's no fucking way you're a leftist. There's no way that you believe in human rights because you cannot sit up here and tell me you cannot tell me that you think a black life matters if you don't think that all the fucking lives matter over there in, uh, in the middle fucking east where we have destroyed, destroyed their countries. Over in Palestine, where, where we are continuously supporting governments that are fucking committing genocide and displacing them. You cannot tell me that you give a fuck about black people. And I know you don't, because if you say the word nigga, fuck you if you're white. <laughs> Period. Full stop. Block me the fuck back. 
<laughs> and what they will always say, and this is why Voss is a joke, and this is why we got to make this, we got to call him out. Because their argument is like, oh, he debate right wingers, and he he literally responsible for getting all these right wingers to not be racist. This is how much of a joke the white Western left is. They think that they got, they turn someone anti racist because they voted for Jim Crow Joe. <laughs> how does that make sense? They're like, hey, I convinced someone to vote for Joe Biden, the author of the crime bill, the fucking racist who funded multiple genocide. I I, I killed cured them of the racism. They still believe it's okay for them to say the N word. Right? But they're like, oh, we're not racist. We vote for the Democrats. They're fucking clowns. They're clowns. And then we actually have real black issues when we call for reparations. They're like, oh, we can't advocate for reparations because it's, it's uh, divisive. Once again, they always put the, the black issues on the back burner because they don't care. At best, they want to save a little bit of money on health care, if possible. If po- only if possible. They don't want to push the politicians. They'd rather have their club Right now, now going back to the substance of the issue, because this is not about the drama, this is about the issues. Talking about, oh, you can't have China coming in. Vosh says, <laughs> look at the care, look at the comparison here. And I got out for the screen, I'll read it out for you, Finney. You can't see it, but the audience can. Despite the recent closing of hundreds of bases in Iraq and Afghanistan, so they already closed hundreds, the United States still remain nearly one. Uh, 800 military bases in more than seven, uh, 70 countries. 800 military bases in the United States. That's how many military bases we got. Compared... The empire of the fucking world. We are the United now, empire of the world. You didn't yep. know? The next, the, next, the next image here, China built its first overseas military base. 700 military bases compared to one. Did Vosh cover that on his show? Do you, when you watch Rational National, when you watch the Humans Report, when you watch TYT, did they cover that? It's about the issues, not the drama. <laughs> did they, he's talking about, oh, we can't allow these other countries to be in. Oh, what's the, once again, that's Western chauvinism. He ain't talking about the military bases. He's not talking about foreign policy. These same Western leftist clowns, they tell you to vote for Democrats because they don't care about foreign policy. They never cover foreign policy. They're like, oh, I would never vote for a politician for good reason if he's anti-gay. But if it's someone is a, a Zionist who believe in the genocide of the Palestinian people, oh, that's not that's not a big deal. <laughs> there's people, there was Palestinians that was yelled at because they wouldn't vote for Jim Crow Joe. There was sexual assault uh, victims who was arrested because they didn't vote for Jim Crow Joe. And this is the white savior complex to the left. You gotta follow my lead. Oh, you, if you want to advocate for something I don't agree with, you're being divisive. That's who they are. Once again, this is about the facts. Did they cover the military bases on this show? And the same white left, these are the people that lean off the clip. Because think about who, who are the most who are the most popular white YouTubers? Is him? And some of the people I even like was Cal, a humanist report, Rational National, Chris Ball, David Pacman, Majority Report, and Anna Kasparian. Mm-hmm. What do they all have in common? These are the most popular ones. They're all white. They dictate the where the left has been, and now they have sold us out to the police state. Because I debate Voss. They're like, oh, De- Voss, oh my God, he owned him because Nick got angry. But no one, I, I promise you, no one can debate the facts of what I said. Because he said with a straight face that if we vote for Joe Biden, you had a liberal establishment will, that will move and lock up with the progressive army and push them to the left. This is what I covered in my show earlier. Where? Where are you guys show me, at? Show it to me. Show it to me. Show me the lockstep. Where's it at? Where, show where? me the lockstep. Where, where's it at? Where's the policy? Show it to me. Point me into the progressive policy. Let me see it. Because all I've all I've heard out of Joe Biden's mouth is bipartisanship. Olive branch. We have to mend with the racist Republican right. Oh, my God. We have to embrace them. And no, we're not giving you health care. No, we're not going to give you the public option. No, we're not going to cancel student loan debt. No, we're not going to do... Fucking fifteen dollar minimum wage. No, we're not gonna do affordable housing. No, we're not gonna give you more food assistance. Where the fuck is the fucking progressive policy at? Show it to me. And, and they Show say, what did they say, Finney? They said we're gonna spend our time pushing Biden to the level. Yeah, we voted for Joe Biden. We voted for the guy who did the most damage to the black community in the last few decades. But we will push him left. How is that gone? Where are you guys at? You know what, Vosh? He, he gets all his clicks on his show because he go after tankies. He he busy punching left. He made two hundred thousand dollars a year. Once again, he got a giant platform, way bigger than mine. And he calls other people grifters. Meanwhile, he's literally taking donations on this show. 
How does that make sense? Apparently, only white people are allowed to be in this space. Then you got people like Humans Report, you got Rational National defending Andrea, calling us devices. Devices, she's like, oh, she's, yeah, she was a Nazi in 2017, but she goes to the protest. Okay, then what she did, what do she do? She go to protest, put it on social media, put it on YouTube, and she get paid for it. So she was a racist who's now grifting on our movement. But then they call me a grifter. I don't make shit. <laughs> I make 50 times less than Vosh probably does. And you want to call me a grifter? You want to call us a grifter? If any actually running mutual aid groups, Rome actually running mutual aid. And this shows the anti-blackness on the left. Because they forgive racist Nazis like Andrea, who called us niggers and monkeys, as of 2017. They're like, oh, and, that's okay. And they accepted the apology for us. They're like, we accept the apology for you. On our behalf. You. We accept the apology <laughs> for you. And then... But that's not racist. And then what's the, this shows the anti-blackness. And I'm going to pass it right to you, Finney, so you can expand on your thought. We have a, we have a member of Rome... Who, once again, we explained before, the black community grew up in a very conservative, social conservative family lifestyle. They was the giant advocates against gay marriage for years and years and years. So Rome had some problematic views in the past that he apologized for and continued to make work to make him right. Do they give him the benefit of the doubt? He's, do, he's, he's organizing Medicare for All March. He organizing the tour for the poor. He's putting the work in to actually atone for his previous beliefs, which a lot of us had growing up. Because we grew up with social conservatives. So he evolved on these issues. Why don't black leftists get credit for that? Boston be like, oh, we got all these uh, reformed white racists who not really reformed. They were just Joe Biden voters. But meanwhile, black leftists who used to be social conservative, nothing they can do to be redeemed. You got Vosh, who was a transphobe, who who been on anti-black tirades. He literally sexually harassed a girl. And he admitted it. He made a video about it. <laughs> But that guy gets the benefit, benefit of the doubt. Andrea gets the benefit of the doubt because she's, she's a white lady. She's all oh, reformed. I get, I get clout <laughs> now because I go to these protests. But meanwhile, Rome, who made mistakes, who actually put in work and then not actually grifting, he's in the same working class of conditions we are in. He, he feeding the people. He's not going on YouTube and making clout. Andrea bragged about how much money that she made on her YouTube page. She's like, oh, my God, I cannot believe how much money I'm making. The Humans Report is trying to platform her. So she is grifting and making money on black lives, but she can be forgiven, but Rome cannot. Any mistake I made, which I wanted to open up to, I cannot be redeemed. These people block me into quickness. If I say one thing they disagree with, this is why I don't care about you anti-solidarity white leftists because they quick to block me over one, any small, small disagreement. But my comrades, like a Fannie, Rome, FHL, we are in this together to learn and grow. They don't care about that. They want to censor and they want to attack the black left. You got people like Suki Mom who only go after black people on Twitter and people of color. And then people are like, oh, you, you got to have unity with us. Fuck your unity. I want solidarity. There's no, and there's none being shown. None being shown. And then we are called as divisive for pointing this out. By pointing out the racism and to point out... Like, Vosh believes he's actually converting people. He actually thinks he converted anti-racists. You are not converting anti-racists. You are turning them to Vosh fans. Because <laughs> these are people that would offend you for saying the N-word. Not that big of a deal. They still say it. This is what they say on stream. Imagine what they say in private. You guys want to just give you the benefit of the doubt? And people were mad at me because I said, I'm willing to work with anyone who's a conservative. Because I, I say that because I don't give you the benefit of the doubt. Just because you're le a white leftist don't mean you're not racist. So I got to do these calculations in my head. Like, okay, I guess you're fine for Medicare for all. So I'm, you may, you might not be not racist. But at the same time, he, he was against force to vote. <laughs> he was against any fight against Medicare for all. So I'm like, oh, you're not for the policies that, that for my community, but I'm supposed to give you the benefit of doubt not being racist. But I'm supposed to be automatic, automatically, like, I never, I want to talk to anyone who, who's a right winger. That doesn't make sense. You, you sound like fucking John McCain right now. And I'll pass it right to, I'm going to give your, give your thoughts to Finney because he made a video. This, once again, this is not about drama. This is about the issue. I'm, I'm responding. I'm responding because he actually did a response video to us talking to Jimmy Dore before. And I'm like, I, I'm not about the drama, so I didn't respond. But since we're on the topic, since we're on the topic, he said Jimmy Dore is a sinker right winger who wants us to fold our beliefs. So he's lying to his audience. He said he wants us to fold our beliefs to right wingers. He never said it. I asked him what's on the show. He wants the people that want to work with Medicare for all and in the wars. Meanwhile, he smeared Jimmy Dore as a right winger. He smeared us as secret right, right wingers. And he is sounding just like John McCain, Steve Bannon, Mike Pompeo, 
He sounds like them on foreign policy. We just played a clip. Do you guys need to see it again? Sound he literally like used the same right wing neocon talking points on foreign policy, but he wants to say we part of Red Brown Alliance. That fucking bullshit conspiracy theory. But what's your thoughts, Finny? I would just like to say this, like, you know, solidarity comes at the sacrifice of your comfortability, white people. Like, you cannot have your fucking cake and eat it too in this liberation movement. That's not how the fuck this shit works, okay? Like, we are all learning and growing as we go. Like, even me as an abolitionist, like, I understand that abolition is something that I'm learning. I'm learning every day. I'm imagining that every day. As as organizers, we we are organizing around these ideas. We're coming up with with these with these ideas. We're doing this research behind the scenes, you know, that trying to figure out like what the best possible thing to do is for the community, not based on what the fuck we think, but based on what you know the community thinks. And the fucking problem, the fucking problem is y'all are not willing to give up your spot or your privilege or your access to the same power that is oppressing us. I'm tired of trying to get access to the same power that is oppressing me. I don't want to have access to them motherfuckers. You know what I want? I want to have more people like me actually representing me. I want to have more people like me doing mutual aid. I want to have more people like me talking about issues that actually help my community. I do not want to continue to have fucking stupid ass drama filled conversations. I do not want to continue that the check leftists on what left policies actually look like because there's just no fucking way in hell you can tell me that it is and that it is slightly okay for us to ever have been in the middle east but especially in 2021 for us to be have a single fucking military base in any of the middle eastern countries is just a show of just fucking pure power and greed and that is nothing more nothing less and we are sacrificing so many fucking lives for the american exceptional dream and exactly what the fuck is that when forty six thousand bridges in america are structurally de deficient in the richest country in the world children are fucking starving one out of six children are starving in america but you know this is the richest country in the world right what the fuck are we giving up in order to fucking occupy and fucking settle in these fucking territories and these sovereign countries that we have no fucking business being in? What exactly are we gaining here? And if that is something as a leftist that you are fucking missing, if you are missing that very important part that we are investing more money and killing people than we are fucking investing in saving ourselves and saving what ever is left of this bullshit ass country then you my friend are a fucking grifter you my friend are a fucking fraud you my friend are a fucking liar and there's no fucking way i want to be in community with anybody that doesn't believe that my existence or the existence of other marginalized people that are being terrorized by this fucking government don't deserve their sovereignty and their right to self-determined fucking nation Ooh, that's that's exactly what we need here now, once again, I still got plenty to say. Say, say, play it again, because we got, we got plenty more people watching now. Because, uh, once again, this is not about drama. This is about the issues. You, want, you guys want to say it again? We are making ground here, because this, Jen Perlman, I like her. She, a lot of people criticize her, but I'm, I like Jen. Um, but she she has been uh, very uh, sympathetic to Voss. She platformed him among many other people. But even she had to call this out. So this is, we didn't watch it again. So you guys wonder why I'm going after him. It's not about drama. It's about the issues. This is why we are doing this. Because I cover foreign policy, state violence, and the class war. Now he stepped in my, he, he stepped in my background now. <laughs> so now we got the book. Even Jen's calling this out. I disagree with Vosh on military occupation in the Middle East. These countries became destabilized due to our presence there in the first place. Once again, Ask the Libyan people about how the United States, how they should prefer the United States. They, they got slave trades over there now. A thriving African society was destroyed. The United States literally putting sanctions on people, which is a war crime in other countries. But he, this Western chauvinist want to, argue, want to argue on behalf of U.S. imperialism and CIA talking points. Because I say he's a Dick Cheney Democrat, because this is exactly the same argument they use to justify regime change and U.S. imperialism. And Jen continues, it's all about the resources and money and power that comes with it. He don't even understand that. They don't cover that on Vasha's show. They just cover the damn tankies. Damn tank. If if Fred Hampton 
who was a Marcus Lenz, by the way, the ML that he always beef against, if he was alive, he would be smeared as a tanky. Malcolm X be smeared as a tanky by these people. And you guys wonder why I don't like him? <laughs> this is not the Fred Hampton position. What are you about to hear here? That's not, this is not the Fred Hampton position. Let's listen to this. One more time. So you got so the Chinese new vassal we states about. for the next. This is ridiculous. If we pulled out, if we allowed these countries to destabilize, you know what would happen within 10 years? Guaranteed. You know what would happen within 10 years? I bet you more than anything. America pulls out with no exit strategy, no long term plan for supporting these countries. These countries fail and they turn into. I mean, we're talking Cambodia level. We're talking fields of corpses. China will come in with boots on the ground and fix their problems, and they'll be Chinese vassal states for the next century. Once again, if we pull out, if eyes, we allow these Tucker countries Carlson. to destabilize, you know you what happens? Close your eyes, you can just listen, you can hear Tucker Carlson and yeah. Laurel Ingram talking to you through this fucking screen. Real live. That's exactly That's what the that same shit argument like. that the, the neocons use. This is the same argument that neocons use, guys. Once again, you bring up China because he punches left. China got one military base compared to our 700. Is China, is they responsible for the destabilization of the Middle East? Or are they responsible for the destabilization and destruction of the global South due to neoliberalism? Does Vox talk about it on the channel? I doubt it. Let's continue. It's going to be hard, but we only got 25 seconds. <laughs> within 10 years, guaranteed. You know what would happen within 10 years? I bet you more than anything. America pulls out with no exit strategy. Oh yeah, I think I, I, think I already played it on a loop. I think I already did. Maybe I, I think no long-term plan for supporting these countries. Just, just these these countries eyes, fail, and they can, turn you into. You can hear Fox News playing in the background. I mean, we're talking Cambodia level. You can we're hear your racist grandpappy. China will come in over with a boots on the ground lot. and fix their problems, and they'll be Chinese <laughs> vassal states for the next century. What the fuck? What the fuck is the difference between him and and Fox News right now? Like, what's the difference? He won that like, MSNBC contract, I guess. Like, what's the difference? Like they they said, remember they said they're gonna drag Joe Biden to the left, Joe Biden and the Democratic Party drag, dragged out to the right. You you repeating fucking Tony oh, Blinken talking window. points. You guys you guys like you guys got out maneuvered now played by Nancy Pelosi Joe Biden. And this is why they focus on punching left because they know they are inherently wrong on this. You what do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? Because their argument, now once again, this is about the issues, not the drama. They said, if we back Joe Biden, we can push the Democratic Party to the left. They haven't done that. Not only have they not done that, the, the, you have AOC, which he loves. Vosh is a big supporter of AOC. She's tweeted about Medicare for all one time since like January 20th. She's a good little Democratic Party operative, isn't she? Because you do not not shift the Democratic Party to the left. They shift you to the right. And I covered this in my show before. We are back to the substantive issues here. This is why we are talking about this. Now, you can't see this for me, but I got it with my people. I'll read it for you. This is what the Biden administration is using to justify giant police budgets. They're, they said the president ran on and won the most votes in of any candidate in the history of the platform of boosting funding for law enforcement. After Republicans spent decades trying to cut the cops program. So what did I say? So once again, the same Vox fans who are so shallow, they're like, oh, I can't believe Vox got Nick mad. He did so great in that debate. He said that we're going to push them left. But meanwhile, he, the Biden administration, and I'm going to get your th thoughts of Finney real quick before you drop what you're thinking. <laughs> because the Biden administration used the fact that they're folded. They used the fact that the progressives folded. That Vox got people to campaign for Joe Biden. And then I asked them, like, what's the long-term plan? If Kamala and Pete Buttigieg win in 2028, do you support them? He said, yes. So the progressives sold us out to the police state. Right, Afeni? You know, if... <laughs> <laughs> we should, like, honestly, are you surprised that Jim Crow Joe Biden, are we surprised that he ran on raising uh, fucking police budgets? No. But why did Joe Biden win? Because the last time I checked back, if we scroll back to the primaries of Fourth Super Tuesday, Joe Biden was doing very poorly, <laughs> as was Kamala Harris and the rest of, you know, the, the motherfuckers. And guess who was leading? Bernie Sanders. And guess what Bernie Sanders was running on? Cutting back all these different things 
And he didn't successfully say defund the police back then. But when you talk about reinvestment in community programs, most of the time, it means you have to cut back somewhere. And the, and the biggest parts of most city budgets are police and public safety budgets. So where the fuck else would that money have come, come, have come from in retrospect? Let's be real here. So why did Joe Biden win? Because Barack Obama waved his magic hand over the DNC and everything else. Because uh, fucking Donald Trump was a fucking fascist and he was literally outside of all of the effective shit that he did within his within his administration for his base. He was the worst president of all time for anybody that is black, brown or of any type of trans or gay, period. (laughs) And we all we know this. We know this. That is literally the only reason why. Joe Biden won, not because he was a good candidate, not because his policies were good, not because his policies were popular. It was literally because, yet again, the Democratic Party fucking swiped everyone to the side. And yet again, fucking so-called progressives, so-called people that say they fucking support our cause and support our revolution are telling us, well, you have to just vote for this person. You just have to do it. You can do this. And then we're watching the Overton window get yanked to the right. Every day, more and more. And people like, you know, all these fucking white leftists like TYT, the Humanist Report, Sam Cedar, fucking Emma Vigland, all them hoes, all them motherfuckers are fucking complicit in this shit because instead of holding these motherfuckers accountable, these motherfuckers are the politicians right now. I know I say motherfuckers a lot. (laughs) The politicians are not being actually held accountable. The squad are not being held accountable. The fucking congressive, the Congressional Progressive Caucus is not being held accountable to actual progressive policies. And this is, and these are the people that say that they're run, running on human rights. Well, if you fucking give a fuck about my human right, if you fucking white okay. leftists that dominate, you know, that dominate all this shit, um, as far as like the media is concerned uh, on the left, if y'all actually give a fuck about human rights, then start talking about them. Start framing them. Bernie Sanders was the messenger of liberatory politics, and he left a lot of shit out. He was not the author. AOC is not the author of liberatory politics. The people are. And we know what our liberation looks like. So it is up to us to actually hold these motherfuckers accountable. So when you have white leftists that fucking feed into conservative fucking bullshit, when you have white leftists that actually feed into and fucking continuously lean to the right, you are doing a huge disservice. A huge disservice to our movement by co-opting our language and fucking me- don't, not even fucking meaning that shit. You don't even fucking actually mean that shit. Then why are you saying it? Go ahead and just come out as a fucking liberal already. Say that you support imperialism. Go ahead and say that you support big police states and that you're a little bit racist. At least then we'll know that you are who you fucking truly say you are. At least then you could be like an Anderson Cooper or one of them motherfuckers and make all this fucking money. But get the fuck out of our fucking way. Move. And and people, Sean, this this is not left and finding. This is what I want people to understand. The divide on left has been very sim- based on one simple thing. The divide on left has been the white privileged bourgeoisie left yelling at the disenfranchised communities who refuse to vote and support the Democratic Party. That is what it always go back, uh, boils down to. That was the whole anti-force to vote thing. Was like, oh, we can't embarrass AOC. That's the argument that Vosh made with a straight face. So it's all about defending the squad. So why do they go after uh, and attack anti-imperialist journalists like Aaron Maté? Okay, they, they debut uh, the mainstream U.S. talking points on imperialism, and they make AOC and Bernie look bad when they don't speak up on these issues. This is what it's always about. So there has been a trend that I've seen, I talk about this with Misty, where you have leftists who smear Julian Assange and his supporters. For example, they smeared him as Assangeist. Doing the talking points and and what the CIA would love for them to do. Why are they doing that? They are doing that because when I criticize Bernie Sanders and AOC and the squad and the Justice Democrats for being weak on the issue of Julian Assange, that's a very legitimate criticism. So in order to fight against that, they got to delegitimize and they got to smear anyone who advocates for Julian Assange as Red Brown Lions. Nazbull, Secret Fast. You got, and now, once again, look at the power dynamics there. You got a rich white boy who makes $200,000 a year 
smearing working class black, black people who are standing up for the First Amendment as fascists. How is that not problematic? You guys don't even see the class dynamics there. All the famous white YouTubers where I just laid out, they're all millionaires. They all make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. I'm just a citizen journalist living in poverty. <laughs> we all are. We all struggling, right? Then they smear us. And they smear my friends like Misty. They, they smear people who are advocates for Julian Assange. They're like, oh, they're grifters. They're grifters for actually advocating for an issue. Meanwhile, you advocate for the Democratic Party, the biggest grifters of all time. What's the biggest grift in the DC, uh, Triple C? What's the bigger grift in the Lincoln pro, uh, Project? You guys ally with these grifters. You ally with you ally with the people who are making a ton of money getting you to fundraise for these campaigns. They hired DNC and consultants because AOC got elected. She had a lot of socialist activists that I know who I'm mutuals with. She let those people go and she hired DNC insiders. These people making giant, giant uh, paychecks advocating for U.S. imperialism in the police state. And you guys think you can call us right-wing sympathizers? You sound like fucking Dick Cheney. And, and this is something I see in the comments that says, stop using the term left. And people are like, why do you keep saying Vosh is a leftist? Point taken, but I am making a point when I do that. Because despite whether Vosh is a leftist or not, he has a giant platform. He got about 100,000 times more people that watch him than me. That's the reality of the situation. He got people like Kyle Kalinske and Crystal Ball who platforms him. He got human support and rational national. You can say these people are not leftists either. But these people got giant audiences that dwarfs up us. They platform him, and he drives the narrative of the left. So whether he left us or not, he infiltrated our spaces. And they make it a hostile spaces for people of color and black leftists. That's why we are the primary target. They do, once again, they do not create anti-racists because that's what they think they do. Oh, I'll debate right-wingers. I'll drag them to vote for Jim Crow Joe. You're not doing that. You're getting them to be loyal Voss fans and Democrat supporters. That's what you guys are doing. Once again, it's not about drama. It's, it's about issues. What I want to say is, what I say that was wrong? Because when we organize, like the people organizing for Medicare for All marches right now, and they're again attacked relentlessly by the same people we are talking about right now. This is the anti-solidarity left. This is the anti-solidarity left where Vosh told me that black people should vote for their oppressors. I told them that Joe Biden was the most anti-black public servant. They were like, what? <laughs> Cause they don't know. They don't cover that on their show. They don't cover that. So he's like, oh, you got to vote for their pressures. What, what does this mean? This is the anti-solidarity left. You got to support the Democratic Party. You got to have Trump derangement syndrome like me to support my privileged white ass. That's what it's about. Because who has been Joe Biden been the lesser of two evils for, for thus far? Not black people? Not Hispanics? You got increased ICE and police budgets? You got them literally being complicit in, in apartheid in uh, Israel? I said that in April. <laughs> in May, in July, I was like, bro, I'm not voting for Joe Biden because I stand solidarity with Palestinian people. I'm not voting for Joe Biden because he destabilized the Middle East. He funded multiple genocides, and he's doing it now, and you guys got eggs in your face. Like, what's going on? We're not called it. With a straight face, Vosh was like, oh, you got to vote for Joe Biden because it's platform. The motherfucker that lied saying he was part of the protests in South Africa and apartheid. The guy who lied about being part of the civil rights movement, he told his massive audience, which is way which is way larger than mine. We got to vote for this guy because he, he doesn't do his platform. This is shit you learn on day one. Day one, you learn that politicians lie for votes. And this motherfucker t literally, he was like, oh, you don't know his platform? I'm like, bro, I don't care. About, I don't know his platform. I don't care because he's not going to do it. And then they were like, oh, socialism and May don't know his platform. Uh, uh, I didn't care. <laughs> and once again, I, 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 proved, I asked anyone, what one thing I said that was wrong? We got literally Biden going after leftists now. And since they always oppose um, black leftists and the fact that they would smear Frank Hefner as a tank, if he was alive today, they you are the white moderate that we was warned about by MLK and Malcolm X. Whether you believe it or not, you have Vox literally advocating after a teenage girl was killed by a cop. She's like, wait, 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 we can't take her side yet. You are the white moderate that MLK warned us about. And this, you know, and it's crazy because as an abolitionist, like I believe in transformation. I believe in redemption. I believe in, you know, people's rights to evolve and right to grow yeah, from their mistakes. That. You know, I truly do. 
And, you know, do I think that people like Rome have a long way to go? I do. <laughs> but transformation and evolution takes time. But it's about the effort, about, about, about doing these things. Exactly what have y'all white leftists done to really check your whiteness and fucking acknowledge your privilege in the space that you take up in a liberation space that is supposed to be for black and indigenous people that is supposed to be for queer people for trans people for non-binary people people that are not living in the in the same amount of privilege that you are <laughs> but here you are yet again co-opting this shit here you are yet again preaching the wrong fe- fucking message here you are yet again telling us that we should vote for the lesser of two evils because for some reason somehow some way that weak ass fucking shit that y'all was doing before the before this um president got elected that weak ass shit is still gonna work afterwards if y'all are not gonna elect this man and be fucking aggressive behind our policy platform if y'all are not going to elect this man and be and be in his face and be confrontational about what our principles are and be confrontational and um aggressive towards these politicians then get the fuck out of my face get out of our way they are in our way and i already know what the response to this is gonna be because you guys watch it live but i'm gonna clip it and people are gonna get mad at us but we we ain't say one goddamn thing that was wrong because you do have people that are going to say, oh, you guys are attacking the left, you're dividing the left. Once again, this is a product of anti-blackness in the, in the left community. What do White I mean by that? White leftists are attacking my humanity. White leftists are literally attacking my humanity and my existence. White leftists are... continuously attack my humanity and my existence every time they fucking uphold some police state bullshit. And they want us to be silent about it because they don't want us to divide unity. Fuck your unity, give me solidarity. That's the theme of this live. Check this, check this meme. I'll share it so you can see Infinity. Because this is when I was first talking about the issue. I, once again, I had a lot of people who got upset. Me, like, oh, my God. Are you going after these people? Bro, if you either listen to us or you're against us. This is not a, this is not a, this is not a debate to me. Because this is the mindset that they feed. Let me enlarge it for everyone. This is the white left. This is the rational national. This is David Doe. Because these people don't follow me when I called out Andrea for a racist bullshit. And they were like, oh, she actually put work in our community. No, her response to being called out for being a Nazi and a racist was to block the entirety of the black left. I know these people. There are people that don't even know who she is. They were like, yo, I was blocked. I don't even know who she is. So she literally went through a blockchain of black left and blocked them all to hide her racism. And that's who Rational National, that's who David Doe, that's who Humans Report, that's who Mike uh, Figueredo was defending. This is who they are in a nutshell. This person was racist because we accepted their apology on your behalf. And then what we said, this is what caused Rational National Humanist Report to block me. Well, we are comfortable with that. Maybe talk about us. Maybe talk to us and have us explain what it actually means to, be, to actually show redemption to the black community after being a Nazi when you're 21 years old. <laughs> and you guys know the reason why she turned? And she admit she admitted against it. She she said the reason why she became a leftist is because she transitioned, which we support. But then her racist white friends didn't. And she said, "Oh, I was re- rejected from this space, so I, I looked into the left and I liked it." So she didn't even become anti-racist out out of uh, tribute to the black Americans. She became anti-racist because to fit in with the left because her racist friends didn't approve her transition. She said this. Now continue the meme. They said, why are you so divisive? The people going to call me this when I drop the segment. Why are you so divisive? You calling out Andrea. Because they want sci- they want a false sense of peace. They are the white moderate that MLK and Malcolm X warned us about. 